Father, I pray that you bless your holy word now as it goes forth from the mouth of this messenger, anoint it to the hearts of the people. And Father, it will not return into thee void, but it will accomplish that which you please and prosper in the thing where to you have sent it. In thy name I pray, amen. Good evening folks, this is Run to Christ Live. We are streaming on YouTube. Welcome. Hope you're all doing well. So tonight folks, I've got a, hopefully a good show talking about the latest things on coronavirus. I've also went over a couple of old movies. Um, one of them's from the 90s. It's called 12 Monkeys. I don't know if you've ever seen it or whatever, but I've seen it a long, long time ago. Um, because of this coronavirus outbreak, um, I'll, I checked it out again, I read the story and I was like, oh, that's pretty interesting. So tonight we've got, we got a, a mission to go on. I don't know if you know, but I've put out the posts across my social media about the current dilemma that me and my family are facing. So, well, so far we have managed to raise over £900 to help with this dilemma. And what it is, if you don't know, we're currently facing eviction and we need the help of uh, the brothers and sisters in Christ, especially my subscribers. Um, if you can help this channel, now is the time. And what I need is basically around 47 people uh, to subscribe to my website, runtochrist.net. If I get 47 people subscribing before Monday, then problem solved and we don't need to worry about it anymore. So I'd just like to say thank you for those of you who have donated already. Uh, God bless you. Thanks so much. It's really been a blessing. And if you can, if you enjoy this channel, uh, I just ask you to help out and buy a premium annual subscription, as you can see here on the screen. And it's forty two ninety nine. And if I get 47 subscribers, everything's fine. Now, what we're going to talk about tonight, well... As I said, 12 Monkeys, I don't know if you've seen it, but it's a pretty old film from the 90s. And it's about time travel, and a guy goes back in time, and he is not so much trying to prevent the events that we're going to talk about. What it is, is humanity is almost wiped out uh, by a virus. They don't name the virus, it's not called coronavirus or anything like that. But I'm going to show you a couple of clips from the film. We're going to look at a few articles and a few concepts to do with time travel. And You'll probably be familiar with that kind of thing if you've seen Back to the Future, The Terminator and all these other kind of things. But in 12 Monkeys, the guy goes back in time to gather information about a virus and where it started. Now. According to the movie, five billion people die with this virus, and Bruce Willis—he's the main character in it. He uh, he is sent back in time to track down where the outbreak uh, happened, and so that they can find a sample of the original virus, so that they can make uh, a vaccine or a cure or an antidote or whatever. And it's based on um, the idea of a causal time loop. I don't know if you're aware of that concept, but what it basically means this is um, if you go back in time with the knowledge of the future uh, and sort of to prevent something from happening, you actually are the cause of that event happening. So, for example, in the movie um, The Time Machine, the, the main character in the time machine 
his wife dies in a car crash and he invents the time machine to try and go back in time and save her but it ends up being that he's the one driving the car to try and prevent his wife from from dying but he's the one that actually ends up causing it and so the film's kind of it's like that you've got you've got Bruce Willis this is Bruce Willis when he's a kid right and all throughout the film you see uh Bruce Willis having this reoccurring dream and um he sees himself getting shot as a young boy and obviously it's in the past and he grows up around this time where the virus had started its outbreak and he gets sent back to the very exact spot where the virus is going to start being an outbreak and he witnesses his own death so it's like a causal time loop thing and apparently in this movie the concept is that you can't change the past that it's already happened so you can see some of the clips here uh, Bruce Willis actually gets shot chasing this guy with a suitcase this guy's the guy responsible for the virus outbreak and so throughout the film you're told that this uh, group called the 12 monkeys are responsible for the outbreak and the 12 monkeys turn out to be animal an animal activist group that are kind of like you know the eco activists that you see around you today so I'll play a couple of clips and we'll talk about the clips and things like that And so you can see here, 5 billion people will die from a deadly virus in 1997. The survivors will abandon the surface of the planet and once again the animals will rule the world. So right from the very beginning of the film you're getting this theme of animals will rule the world, you know, that's kind of like save the planet, save the animals, that kind of idea. And it says at the bottom of the text, excerpts from an interview with a clinically diagnosed paranoid schizophrenic. April 12, 1990 and if you remember the film Bruce Willis gets sent back in time and he ends up in a mental institute because he starts talking about what's going to happen in the future and they all think he's crazy so he ends up in a mental institute and he's trying to tell the story to everybody and obviously they all think he's bonkers you know what crazy is crazy is majority rules yeah uh Take germs, for example. Germs? Uh-huh. In the 18th century, no such thing. Not a nothing. No one ever imagined such a thing. No sane person anyway. Ah, ah. Along comes this doctor. Ah, ah, ah. Summer Weiss. Summer Weiss. Summer Weiss comes along. He's trying to convince people, well, other doctors mainly, that there are these teeny tiny invisible bad things called germs that get into your body and make you sick, huh? He's trying to get doctors to wash their hands. What is this guy, crazy? <laughs> so, he's in the mental institute and he's talking to Brad Pitt and he, he actually, he mentions the idea to Brad Pitt about uh, the, the human race being wiped out. Maybe the human race deserves to be wiped out. Wiping out the human race? It's a great idea. It's great. But uh, more of a long-term thing. Um, first we have to focus on more immediate goals. And so Brad Pitt turns out to be the son of somebody who works in a top secret, well not secret, but top military virus lab where people are got these um, got these viruses on the go and Brad Pitt's character you know, he's like a, an animal activist and he becomes the guy responsible for starting the, the 12 Monkeys group. 
And so, as I say, they're just an animal activist group and they turn out not to be the ones um, responsible for the virus. But it's interesting to see, like, he talks about teeny tiny germs and doctors in the past and sort of like 17th century or even before that were saying these teeny tiny germs are the cause of uh, people's illnesses. And it's interesting, actually a Jesuit um, was the first one to propose that. Can't remember his name, but things about the film that I forgot was like, they have these um, moments where it's talking about the Bible and it has um, these various clips just thrown in there with these street preachers and also there's a theme with uh, Bruce Willis's uh, sort of love interest where she writes a book on apocalyptic themes uh, and she does that because she encountered Bruce Willis's character in the um, in the mental institute you know and so here you've got the, the eco activist this is their headquarters sort of thing and it's got it's got a pig on the on the outside and I thought that was kind of interesting because you know swine flu and all that sort of stuff But you have um, this theme going through the whole thing. And here, vaccines are mentioned. I'm going right out to get vaccinated. <laughs> so he says, I'm going, to run, I'm going to run out and get vaccinated, you know? So that's just thrown in there at the beginning of this clip. And then this guy that you see on your screen here, he's the man actually responsible for the virus outbreak. And he makes this comment towards uh, Bruce Willis's love interest in the film, who's just wrote a book on apocalyptic scenes. Hi. I think Dr. Rayleigh, you've given the virus a bad name. I have. Mm -hmm. Surely there's very real and very convincing data that the planet cannot survive the excesses of the human race. This is true. Prolif so you see he said the planet cannot survive the excesses of the human race. So you got that eco, eco agenda, that eco mindset. And, you know, I just think it's interesting that the guy responsible for the virus outbreak turns out to be like an eco activist. He thinks the the world needs to be uh, curbed in population. Operation of atomic devices, uncontrolled breeding habits, pollution of land, sea, and air, the rape of the environment. In this context, isn't it obvious that Chicken Little represents the same vision, and that Homo sapiens motto, "Let's go shopping," is the cry of the true lunatic? So you see, total eco agenda, and you know how does that relate to to real life and what we're going through right now? Well, if you see the, uh, if you follow me on Twitter, you might have seen this post where I said, "Remember when eco satanists said population reduction would help save the planet?" And if you've never seen anything like that before, well, here's a couple of articles. Uh, this one's more than seven years old, so you can see how long they've been trying to, you know, push this sort of idea. Cut world population and redistribute resources, expert urges. Nuclear disaster or plague likely unless population shrinks and natural resources are reassigned to the poor. So it's eco-communism, you know, it's just weird. The world's most renowned population analyst has called for massive reduction in the number of humans and for natural resources to be redistributed from the rich to the poor. He goes on to say here, the optimum population of Earth, enough to guarantee the minimal physical ingredients of a decent life to everyone was 1.5 to 2 billion people, rather than the 7 billion who are alive today or the 9 billion expected in 2050. And so they've been pushing this idea for a long time. And here's another article on Bloomberg. Um, you know, the earth needs fewer people to beat the climate crisis, scientists say. More than 11,000 experts sign an emergency declaration warning that energy, food and reproduction must change immediately. Now, there's a wee video here that you can watch after this finishes here. More than 11,000. 
we declare with more than 11,000 scientist signatories from around the world, clearly and unequivocally, that our planet Earth is facing a climate emergency. Climate change is more severe than predicted, and it's accelerating faster than uh, scientists were expecting. We collected two sets of data over the last 40 years, things like population growth, fertility rate, the meat consumption. And then in parallel, we also looked at atmospheric CO2, nitrous oxide, methane, ice melting. The data is looking much worse than expected. So what we have in this paper is a call to action. Reducing carbon dioxide emissions dramatically, stopping deforestation and planting a lot of trees, reducing meat. And finally, we talk about curbing the population exp And finally, we talk about curbing the population explosion. Now check out the solution. Explosion, for example, educating girls and young women about family planning options. Educating women and young girls about family planning option. That means, you know, promote abortion, promote contraceptives, promote things that go against procreation like the family you know because if you if you have a, a whole bunch of people who don't know what gender they are then hardly likely to be producing more people it's just it's simple it makes sense doesn't it but this is what they're pushing on you so young women about family planning options president trump's response has been really unfortunate in terms of the paris agreement and uh, one of the things we tried to highlight in our paper is that there's things individuals can do and things that are more appropriately done at the level of policy. The message I would send to President Trump is that it's very important for the United States to lead the world in fighting climate change. Greta is uh, fantastic. She's inspired. And there you go. There's the climate poster girl. Inspiring many people around the world. And actually, she inspires me, and that helped inspire this current project. We are at a social tipping point where humanity is talking enough about climate change and starting to take action that we might actually see some really positive things happening here as we move forward. Yeah, so 40 years ago, scientists from 50 nations converged on Geneva to discuss what was called the CO2 climate problem. At the time, with reliance on fossil fuels having helped trigger the 1979 oil crisis, they predicted global warming would eventually become a major environmental challenge. So you can see that, you know, the global warming thing has been changed just to climate change because the planet's actually been cooling since then. And you might say, well, what's this got to do with viruses and coronavirus? Back to the tweet. Now let's watch this video. So there you have it. They're already sort of pushing this uh, because of the virus and because everybody's staying indoors that it's cut China's carbon dioxide emissions. Now who in the world was the biggest CO2 sort of criminal, if you want to put it like that? China, right? It was China that was the biggest polluter in the world and nobody was kind of like saying to China, hey, stop doing that, China. But now look, because of the coronavirus, the streets are empty, the factories are shut down, and it's cut their CO2 by 100 million metric tons. Now this should please all the climate, uh, <laughs> all the climate change, eco-Satanists as I call them. And you're getting to the point now where how long is it gonna be until they start pushing that this virus is a, a good thing, you know? Because it's the same idea as, you know, cutting the world population if, if you die if you're dying from a virus and it's 
cutting all the CO2 that China was producing, then how long is it until they start saying that's a good thing? They do it in incremental steps, you know? Like, if you've ever read George Orwell's um, Animal Farm, that's what this is. I've just varied the quote a bit. So it's two legs good, four legs bad, was the mantra at the first. And then when the animals take over the farm, it becomes two legs bad, four legs good. But I've, you know, did a little twist on it. Two legs bad, virus good, you know. How long until they start saying these kind of things are good for the planet? You know, because they've already been putting the idea out there that the Earth needs fewer people to beat the climate crisis. And this was in November the 5th, 2019. Not too, not too long before the coronavirus outbreak started, wasn't it? At the end of December. So, yeah. And it's in this movie as well. We'll go back to that for a sec. It's in this movie, just in this one clip, it kind of explains it all. I'm going right out to get vaccinated. <laughs> Hi. I think, Dr. Rayleigh, you've given the virus a bad name. I have. Mm -hmm. Surely there's very real and very convincing data that the planet cannot survive the excesses of the human race. This is true. Proliferation Hi. of atomic... You know, is it just a coincidence that you have a Chinese person here as well at this scene? I don't know. You, know, so you make your own mind up on that. Atomic devices, oh, yeah, uncontrolled breeding habits. Pollution of land, sea, and air, the rape of the environment. Thank you, thank you. In this context, isn't it obvious that Chicken Little represents the same vision? And that Homo sapiens motto, let's go shopping, is the cry of the true lunatic? So, yeah, <laughs> consumerism, that's the true insanity sin. But, you know, they're pushing the whole thing on you, aren't they? It's pretty obvious. Uh, let's go check out the chat and see who's there. Who's in the chat? Hey, you got Reed Robins in the chat. You got Badger Wise. You got Michelle. You got AC. Hello, hello to y'all. Thanks for coming. If you haven't subscribed to the website yet, please do. It's for a good cause, and of course, you get a membership on the website to boot as well as helping me out. So you can subscribe here, I'll put the link in there, in the chat, and then you can check it out if you want. So, by the end, um, by the end of the movie, the 12 Monkeys movie, oh, that's right, I forgot. There's all these things thrown in the middle. There's a few, quite a few biblical references in this movie. Um, that I totally forgot about, but since I, you know, downloaded the film to get these clips, I rewatched them, and I thought, wow, I don't remember that. But here, here are some of the clips uh, regarding uh, biblical quotes. The great pestilence. There are omens and divinations. And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath of God, who liveth for ever and ever. Revelations. In the 14th century, according to the accounts of local officials of that time, this man appeared suddenly in the village of Weil near Stonehenge in April of 1362. Using unfamiliar words and speaking in a strange accent, the man made dire prognostications about a pestilence which he said would wipe out humanity in approximately 600 years. Obviously, this plague doomsday scenario is considerably more compelling when reality supports it with a virulent disease, whether it's the bubonic plague, smallpox, or AIDS. And now we have technological horrors as well, such as chemical warfare, which first reared its ugly head during the deadly mustard gas attacks of World War I. Okay, so they're talking about bioweapons there as well, and World War I is mentioned. Now, I don't know if you know your your history when it comes to viruses but after world war one or just right at the end of world war one there was the uh, spanish flu outbreak which killed uh, tens and tens of millions of people and they feature this in the movie a couple of times because uh, bruce willis actually gets sent back in time to world war one and um he gets shot in the leg because they send him back there by accident and he's only there for like you know, a minute or something, but 
I just think it interesting that the film actually had World War World War One in it because of the Spanish flu outbreak, and of course the whole film is about a virus outbreak, isn't it? So it's kind of fitting. And you got this other clip that's got some, you know, preacher who kind of looks like a a, a rags a raggy version of the Knights Templar, I guess you know. Dragons in their pleasant palaces. The seventh angel poured out his fire into the air, and there came you. You. You're one of us. <laughs> now I don't know what he means by that. You're one of us. Uh, is he a fellow time travel traveler? Uh, the film is kind of cryptic in places, and it, it throws these kind of things in there quite a lot, you know. You can also see Bruce Willis here getting um, some some kind of scan on the back of his neck. Uh, this is in the future, and everybody's scanned, and he's actually a prisoner in the future. You see Thank you. You two wait outside. He's got a history, Doctor. Violence. Antisocial six. Repeated violations of the permanent emergency code. So you see some newspaper cuttings here. Too late for cure. The clock is ticking. No cure yet. It's kind of like what they're saying about coronavirus, and they're saying that there's no cure. But apparently, I sp I heard uh, somebody saying that there's a patent uh, for a vaccine, and apparently, uni the United States of America uh, owns the patent. I don't know how true that is. We'll need to figure that out and see it. But um, I can put the link uh, to the video that I watched in the description later, you know, and you can come and watch it. Insolence, defiance, disregard of authority, doing 25 to life. I don't think he's going to hurt us. You aren't going to hurt us, are you, Mr. Cole? No, sir. So, yeah. Let's go back to the web browser. So it's pretty interesting. Um, if you don't know what a causal loop is, you know, if you're a Calvinist, you might like this as well. <laughs> a predestination paradox, also called a causal loop, is a paradox of time travel that is often used as a convention in science fiction. It exists when a time traveler is caught in a loop of events that predestines or predates them traveling back in time. So, you know, obviously predestination, if you're a Calvinist, you'll know what that means. Everything is kind of predestined and you uh, allegedly you, you don't have any free will or free choice in that. But I'm not sure if uh, not sure if I agree that the two are mutually exclusive there. I think that you can reconcile the two ideas. I mean, you could have everything predestined, but to you, living in the time itself in real time to you everything's a still a choice but of course were you always going to make that choice that you were that you're making so i think the two ideas can be reconciled so yeah we're talking about bioweapons right now i don't know <laughs> i did post about this the other day um i was sitting on facebook and you know at the top of your wall it says information and stuff like that or adverts well Facebook asked me to take part in a survey so it didn't tell me what the survey was about before I clicked on it I had no idea but for some reason I clicked on it I don't normally do that but this is the page that it took me to and this is what in this survey we'd like to get your opinion about some content that you may have seen on Facebook and the content is an article by the Daily Mail and it, the title is China's military bioweapon expert takes over virus lab in Wuhan. Now if you go to uh, a search engine and search for that, you know, you get the you get the article, but they've changed the title. It says expert to take over secretive virus in, in a lab in Wuhan. Now if you if you click on the article, um, it talks about conspiracy theories and also Israel was mentioned. Uh, apparently there's a an expert in biological weapons from Israel and he reckons that the the 
coronavirus is a bioweapon that was accidentally or purposely leaked. I can't see why China would purposely do that to their own country, but yeah. So we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna do this survey because um I never got a chance to record it. Right, so let, let, let's do the, let's do the survey. Did you click on the link content above? Yes, I did. All right, continue. Did you find this content in any way misleading or manipulative? <laughs> no, I didn't. When asked whether you found this content misleading or manipulative, you responded no. <coughs> you want me to type it? It's it's just a article by a online news source. You know, so <laughs> they're they're basically wanting to know if I'm a conspiracy theorist or something like that. If I thought this was fake news or something, continue. How trustworthy do you consider the source of this content? <laughs> it's the Daily Mail, so not very not very trustworthy, but if you check it out, the guy that they mentioned from, from Israel, he's actually real, so I don't, you know, if, is there anything to it? I don't know. So I'm not trustworthy at all. How much do you trust the information in this content? Uh, not at all, because I'd go and check it out, you know? What would you think? I would check it out. Continue. When asked whether you found this content misleading or manipulative, you responded no. How confident are you in this rating? <laughs> I'm extremely confident. Is that it? That's boring, man. That's it. I need to fake Chinese people coming through my door and taking me away. That's what I thought was going to happen. It was making me all paranoid, but there you go. So I wanted to show you this as well. And check this out. This is coming out of uh, the New York Times, and it's about South Korea. So shadowy church is at the centre of a coronavirus outbreak in South Korea. As the country's infection numbers so most cases have been connected to the Shin Cheonji Church of Jesus, which, is a main, which mainstream churches consider a cult and they are a cult because the guy who founded the church believes that he himself is the second coming of Jesus Christ so of course it's a cult <laughs> so South, South Korea at meetings of the secretive Shin Cheonji Church of Jesus worshippers sit packed together on the floor forbidden to wear glasses or face masks they come to church even when sick former members say after services they split up into groups for Bible study or go out into the streets and proselytize. After the first coronavirus infection was reported among its members, they were told to lie about being followers, though the church later said that that is not policy. And there's something really strange about this as well, because the, the guy, they call him Patient 31. Where is it? Well, it must be in the other article, but they call this guy, who's uh, apparently he's a super spreader, and they call him Patient Thirty One, and they don't know how he himself got the virus, because apparently he never travelled. But of course, other people travel, so he might have caught it off of somebody who did travel, and apparently he's a super spreader. Um, they're calling it like a zombie apocalypse. Okay, residents on edge as coronavirus cases surge in South Korea. And they're they're worried, you know, so it is someone it's like someone dropped a bomb in the middle of the city. It looks like a zombie apocalypse, you know, because there's nobody there. And that goes back to what the streets are like in China, you know. They're empty. You know, you can see here. And it's just, it's just really strange. This coronavirus is kind of like getting out of, a bit of, out of control. And I don't know if you've heard as well, but in Iran, uh, plenty of people have died in Iran. Uh, the last numbers I saw, there was 28 known infections 
uh, infected people and five people died. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, but if you've got 28 infected and five died, that's 17 uh, 17 percent mortality rate and that's quite high considering that the one that they're pushing on the uh, in the mainstream media is like two percent so 17 percent is a lot higher so this article as well that's you might want to check this one out Alabama FEMA facility will be used as a coronavirus quarantine center Good evening, thank you for joining us here on ABC 3340 News at 6. I'm Muriel Bailey. Coronavirus patients will now be quarantined in Anniston. The Department of Health and Human Services says people who tested positive for the virus on the Diamond Princess cruise ship in Japan will now be quarantined at the FEMA Center in Anniston. Now, these are passengers who have tested positive for coronavirus but are still not showing symptoms. The county and city held a joint press conference today saying they were not consulted about this and just found out hours ago in an email. Uh, at this time, we would like to make it explicitly clear, though, uh, that the federal government has assured us that these patients will not have uh, any impact on our local community and that no one is at risk. All patients will be kept on site at the installation uh, and the city uh, of Anniston the MA, the county commission, uh, we're all working alongside our federal and state partners to ensure the safety of all of our citizens. Now those patients are not here in Alabama yet. It's our understanding they will be transported to Anniston sometime next week. Tim Hodges, the Calhoun County Commission chairman says the city isn't prepared for something like this and they're working on ways to stop it. Whether this happens or not, or we can stop it or not, it can't happen this quick. There's a school, Sacred Heart School, which is right there close to, not to mention all the other schools and children and playgrounds and soccer fields. So there's a lot to think about before this happens. Now, Alabama isn't the only state on the federal radar. Friday, a judge issued a temporary stop for a city in California where officials wanted to create a quarantine site there. The judge did this after the city took legal action. Right now, the World Health Organization is making its first visit to Wuhan, China since the coronavirus outbreak began. Yeah, but you can't trust the World Health Organization. So, guys, keep an eye on that because, you know, FEMA facilities, you know, it's not the... Not to get anybody paranoid or nothing, but you better keep an eye on that. So, here's some quotes from people, famous people and whatever, that um, talk about population reduction. And the one in here that caught my attention was this. Prime Minister, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Now, I haven't went and checked if Boris Johnson actually said this. I'm hoping that Zero Hedge did the research here. Uh, so Boris Johnson allegedly said, the primary challenge facing, facing our species is the reproduction of our species itself. It is time we had a grown-up discussion about the optimum quantity of human beings in this country and on this planet. All the evidence shows that we can help reduce population growth, world poverty, by promoting literacy, and female emancipation and access to birth control. Now that's the same narrative as what these guys were pushing over here. And so that's that's quite disturbing, isn't it? Where am I? Yeah, that's quite disturbing because this whole idea about birth control was obviously you know don't have don't have babies, and it goes straight against uh, God saying be fruitful and multiply. You know. How, how are you going to be fruitful and multiplying if, if you've got birth control and nobody's married and males and females are, you know, they don't know their gender and things like that. And then you've got um, David Attenborough. The human population can no longer be allowed to grow in the same old, uncontrolled way. If we do not take charge of our population size, then nature will do it for us. And that, that quote is really like um, Morris Strong's quote. Where is it? I'll scroll down. I think he's away down here. I'm not going to read all of these, but you know, you can check it out. 
Charles Darwin. Yeah, Morris Strong. Either we reduce the world's population voluntarily or nature will do this for us, but brutally. So, you know, that's obviously a hint at something, you know, taking us out, like a virus, perhaps, you know. And Maury Strong was uh, the UN, I think he was a, a new age guy or something like that. But yeah, so you got David Attenborough basically parroting Maury Strong, because the, the quotes are pretty much the same. Nature will do it for us if we don't take charge of our population. And you've got a whole big list here of people, all different people, you know, here's David Rockefeller. The negative impact of population growth on all of our planetary ecosystems is becoming appallingly evident. And Richard Branson, the truth is this, the Earth cannot provide enough food and fresh water for 10 billion people, never mind homes, never mind roads, hospitals and schools. I mean, if we've got enough people, Richard, then we can build the homes and roads and hospitals and schools, you know? And I don't think that God uh, kind of made mistakes where the concerns with the amount of food and water that we've got on this planet to sustain us, you know? We can grow food, that's the whole point. And if the, the cows and the pigs and the chickens, they all have more babies, there's plenty of food for everybody. So this whole eco-agenda goes straight against everything that the Bible says, you know. The Bible says, be fruitful and multiply. The Bible assures you that the earth will remain. Uh, so climate change is just, it's all a of whack. The CO2 hysteria needs to stop, you know. CO2 is not harmful to the planet, it's actually the opposite, it's very good for the planet and look at Planned Parenthood founder Margaret Sanger now this is what these guys they all want to push on you, birth control family planning Planned Parenthood as it's called in America the most merciful thing that the large family does to one of its infant members is to kill it, I mean seriously you know <laughs> but this is what these guys here, these scientists were saying, well we need to educate women and you know stop deforestation, stop eating meat and finally we talk about curbing the population educating young girls and women about fa family planning options and the founder of Planned Parenthood is uh you know, kill your infant members of the family, you know, it's disgusting, isn't it, it's just disgusting. So, I mean, I'm not going to read uh, much more of these at all, oh, it says, uh, yeah, Prince Philip, that'd be a good one to read, Look, you, I don't know if you've seen this before, but this is Prince Philip, husband of Queen Elizabeth II and co-founder of the World Wildlife Fund. Now isn't that interesting? Because the 12 monkeys are, you know, they're um, animal rights activists. In the event that I am reincarnated, I would like to return as a deadly virus in order to contribute something to solve overpopulation. So, so I mean, what you got going on here, you know? This is one massive eco-Satanist agenda as I like to call it, but you know, you shouldn't be, it's not like I'm wanting you to worry about these things because there's bigger things to worry about in this world, I mean, never mind the coronavirus, you know, there's a virus that everybody has in the whole world, it's too late, you're all infected, it's called the, the sin virus, and the only option for it to cure it is the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the only thing that's going to save you. That's the only thing you should be worrying about. You shouldn't be worrying about coronavirus or whatever else they're pushing on the news. Get right with God and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ and none of that, none of that is going to matter. So how's the chat doing? You still got people here? Bajor, Michelle, Read Romans, how you all doing? It's good to see you all. 
and just for the sake of uh, people watching the replay or coming in late if you want to subscribe to my website it's runtochrist.net forward slash subscriptions and you can buy a premium annual subscription that will do you for the whole year and not only that you'll be helping me out of a pickle that I'm currently in so I need to get 47 subscribers by this Tuesday and yeah if you like this channel and you want to see it keep going now's the time to step up and buy a premium annual membership so that you can help me out here so that would be really grateful and God bless you all if you if you do decide to help and join the website so guys I think with that I'm going to wrap it up and I just want to say thank you to everybody that's um, subscribed already we've managed to raise over 900 pounds and I want to keep that going for until next Tuesday so that I can get out of this pickle and you can come and check out the website all my videos will be on there uh, stuff that YouTube won't allow it will, it will all go up here <clears throat> and you can you see the big big nice video player there for you to watch things so you can come to the members section and you can check out each other all the different members that are already here with us and you can follow each other as well so if you see people you know and whatever and you want to follow their posts you can do all that but please uh, go to runtochrist.net forward slash subscriptions and buy a premium annual subscription help me out that would be really really awesome and I really appreciate it and thank you very much for your time tonight so uh, God bless you all and I'll see you on the next video and possibly the next live stream I might be doing one in the next couple of days so thank you very much everybody, God bless you and I'll see you all soon.